This is Valley News Live at noon. We continue to follow breaking news as Fargo police look for suspects after a woman was shot inside her South Fargo home. Police say her husband was arguing outside with two people in a car just before 10 last night when they exchanged gunfire. One bullet went through the apartment window and hit the victim. The people in the car took off and police are still looking for them. They were driving a white Jeep. Police say they know they're looking for because all the people involved in the shooting know each other. Firefighters have been called back out to Maple Log Resort in Callaway, Minnesota, as multiple fires are still burning at this hour. The popular Lakes Country Resort, which is a family-owned business, went up in flames around 8.30 yesterday morning. What once stood as a three-story, 54,000-square-foot lodge is now a total loss. Fire crews say the building's tin roof and size, as well as the resort's remoteness, made for difficult firefighting conditions. Sheriff Todd Glander says they're trying to keep nearby trees wet so those also don't catch fire. New information this afternoon on a hunting accident in Cass County, Minnesota. The sheriff says the 12-year-old boy who was shot on Sunday has died from his injuries. Deputies got the report of a hunting accident just before 8.30 on Sunday morning in rural Motley. A family was hunting squirrels on public land when the boy was shot by his 47-year-old uncle. He was flown to a Twin Cities hospital where he died. An autopsy is scheduled with the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office. This might be one of the last days we hit 70 degrees in a while. It's nice out there now, Jim, but sounds like we may need a jacket tomorrow. That's right, Jillian. Things are nice outside right now here in Fargo and on the horizon there we can see some of those clouds starting to move in that are ahead of a cold front that definitely will make things much colder. But right now things are looking great. 60s across the area with even some 70s down south and I wouldn't be surprised if some of those 70s even reach that 80 degree mark by this afternoon. Those sky conditions right now are showing most people are clear in Minnesota, but out west we do have those clouds approaching and just recently some of these uh, showers started popping up in the Devil's Lake Basin. And if we zoom out a little bit more, here is that cold front that will be making its way east over the next few hours and will be giving us some rain this afternoon or evening rather. Here in Fargo though, we'll see those clouds start to build as that cold front makes its way toward us and will peak temperatures at about 75, 74 degrees by this afternoon. After that, we'll start dipping after that cold front passes us. We'll give you more information about when that cold front will reach us coming up in just a few minutes. All right, looking forward to it, Jim, thanks. We're waiting to learn more from Grand Forks Police today about a crash that killed two people and hurt another in Grand Forks yesterday afternoon. Police say a van was crossing an intersection at 69th Street and 27th Avenue North when it was hit by a truck. The victims were all in the van. A man is in jail for blocking a train in Grand Forks. Police say Roland Reimers was trying to make a citizen's arrest yesterday because a train was blocking the street. Officers were called to the 5400 block of Demers Avenue where train crews told, the, told them the guy was blocking the train from moving and shooting off some kind of fireworks. He was arrested for disorderly conduct. A perennial candidate for state office, Reimers was expelled from his own party last year after running for a different party in 2020. Another barrage of Russian missiles have laid waste to more Ukrainian communities, killing at least 19 people and injuring more than 100. Natalie Brand reports from Washington. More Russian missiles smashed into multiple Ukrainian cities and towns Tuesday, demolishing homes and critical energy infrastructure. <laughs> this woman was rescued from her home in Slovansk, her neighborhood destroyed by an anti-aircraft missile unleashed by the Russians on a civilian populated area. In Kyiv, residents scrambled to bomb shelters and subways to avoid the continued bombardment. They sang Ukrainian folk songs and the national anthem in defiance. 
The continued onslaught is the largest Russian attack on Ukraine since the early days of the nearly eight-month-long war. Putin felt like he had to do something. Former U.S. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster was on CBS Mornings explaining why Russia has returned to launching missiles on civilians. He says Ukraine's counteroffensive wiped out Russian weapons depots within Ukraine, and this weekend's bombing of a Russian bridge weakened a main route to replenish supplies. The Russians are in a really tough spot. This is about you know, an 850 kilometer long active front. You can't be strong everywhere. The White House says President Biden spoke by phone to President Volodymyr Zelensky on Monday, pledging to provide continued defense support for Ukraine, including advanced air defense systems. President Zelensky also addressed G7 leaders Tuesday during a virtual meeting. Russian officials say continued assistance from the U.S. will only extend the war and make it more painful for Ukraine. Russia's foreign minister says it's open to peace talks with the U.S. He added that Russia will use nuclear weapons only as a defense. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is traveling to Brussels to meet with NATO leaders and help coordinate military aid to Ukraine. The death toll in Florida continues to rise from Hurricane Ian. It's now up to 129 people, and many people who survived are struggling to clean up after catastrophic damage. Officials say more than $207 million in claims have already been paid out by insurance companies. Statewide, the damage is estimated at more than $100 billion. But some fear much of that loss may not be covered. So we already talked to our agents and they basically said nothing's covered unless I can prove to them that wind destroyed it before water touched it. There's nothing that I could do. Podgorski doesn't have federal flood insurance. In fact, only about 18 percent of Florida households do. And homeowners insurance stopped covering flooding in the 1960s. Well, it's one week until the Minnesota governor's debate on Valley News Live featuring current governor Tim Waltz and challenger Scott Jensen. The debate is next Tuesday, October 18th from 7 until 8, live from Rochester, Minnesota. You can watch on KX4. Our Justin Betty is one of the journalists on the panel asking questions. You can send him questions, ideas at justin.betty at valleynewslive.com. Coming up at noon, a new study is raising questions about the effectiveness of colonoscopies as a cancer screening tool. We'll explain the results and what experts think. But next, we'll have your weather to plan your day.